Hey guys and girls, today on We've Got Issues, we'll be reviewing <coughs> Volume 1 and Volume 2 of My Hero Academia. Okay, let's jump straight in. The manga is set in a world where 80% of the human population has superpowers. The story follows Izuku Midoriya, who is on a journey to become a superhero. But there's only one small problem. Izuku was born quirkless, which means he doesn't have any superpowers at all. The first volume explores the tragedy of his obsession with superheroes and his headstrong resistance to believe that he'll always be quirkless. But then a contrived plot device moves the story forward. Izuku notices a classmate being attacked by a monster. While the general public stand around and do nothing, Izuku charges in, knowing he'll be turned into minced meat. When out of nowhere, All Might, the mightiest of superheroes, appears and screams, Yes, you, you did hear that correctly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've read a bit of manga in my time, but by no means would I call myself a connoisseur. And to be honest, the whole yelling out random shit that's become ubiquitous with the shonen genre, I've never really understood. But maybe there's a rich subculture of fighting each other like this in Japan. Not with swords and ninja stars, but with fists and incoherent grammar. So I decided to do some digging around on Google. One popular theory on the internet is, quote, it seems to make the show feel more intense. Something about the characters yelling their attacks just makes the action better. Yeah, somehow, uh... Somehow I don't think so, fellas. The most logical explanation i found goes back to the early 70s to a giant robo-anime called Marzinga Z. The producers of the show thought that if the main character shouted out attack names each time the robot did them, it would give the target audience of 5 to 10 years old a chance to join in on the fun. The producers, thinking that if the kids interacted with a cartoon they were already familiar with, there was a much greater chance of retaining them as an audience member in the long term. Needless to say, the strategy worked, and every other giant robot show since has copied it. But I actually digress. After saving Izuku's life and listening to his story, All Might confides to him that he's actually much weaker than he appears, and can only maintain his superhero appearance for a couple of hours a day. Impressed by Izuku's selfless act of heroism, or possibly stupidity, All Might agrees to transfer his quirk, one for all, to him. But in order to proceed, Izuku must complete a gruelling, Rocky-style montage. get more interesting once Izuku has passed the UA high entrance exam and he's in the system so to speak. He breaks bones exerting power beyond his skill set and has to learn to work within his limitations. The character design and intro for the main antagonist Tomura Shigaraki is simple and very very effective. We go from a series of panels with a hand pulling through this portal to this tight close-up of a splash page. It's macabre, foreboding and disturbing. That's a very tough ask for a children's manga that's supposed to be upbeat and for the most part, bloodless. But then the manga moves back into shonen cliche with the villains. They're bad guys for the sake of being bad. Shigaraki had great potential to be a fully fleshed out character. But he lacks a clear motive for wanting to kill the symbol of peace, All Might. I enjoyed the fact that the characters' powers were indicative of their personalities. Shigaraki's disembodied hands can disintegrate anyone they come into contact with. However, my favourite at the end of the day is Shota Aizawa, aka a Razorhead. Homeroom teacher and protector of the younger flock. He has the ability to erase quirks. 
Speed and subtle moments of poise are key with all action scenes in shonen manga, and Horikoshi keeps the bodies moving quickly and frequently. With clean speed lines and compressed character movements, he sells the typical Japanese style more than he deserves. He's an artist first, and writer secondary. And I prefer the latter over the earlier when it comes to reading comics. You see, I've seen this done before, and I've seen it done better. And that manga's called Naruto. If you enjoyed this review, then like and subscribe. But more importantly, support your local comic book store. They don't survive without us. <laughs>